Everyone into the pool. We're going to take you behind the venerated halls of Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. Is it really where God dwells among his people? Find out. Plus, boingboing.net's Chenny Jardin has a scoop on a post-apocalyptic nightmare art project, as if there's any other kind. And Sarah puts the eternal question, ass, gas, or grass, to the stars of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So get ready for the show that chicks dig because it rarely wears underwear. And when it does, it's usually something unusual. It's Attack of the Show! Pick up on this. Man, I'm glad we got that pesky weekend out of the way. Yeah, so stupid, good to be stupid back. Stupid weekends. Oh man, time off. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> it was. You have a good one? Yeah, was good. I, I was supposed to get a haircut. Yeah, didn't, didn't happen, happen, right? Didn't happen. <laughs> it's, fold, it's coming soon. Everybody, yeah, it's, it's coming soon. That's course, pretty heavy. Uh, Sarah's here as well. Hey guys. Sarah, how was your weekend? Um, it was really good. I went to the Giants game in San Francisco and they won. Woo! They didn't win the day before, the day after, so I'm going to consider it my own good luck. Pretty like, much. I'm sort of a lucky charm, but yes. I knew that already. Fair enough. Yeah. Interesting uh, stuff coming up on the show today. Anything good? Oh, that. Right, right. The show, the show. Um, uh, Gems of the Internet are on uh. Monday. Don't yes. act like you don't love them because I, I said, know you oh, do. No, that was that was an interested and uh, and a, a little um, jealous, inquisitive, like sure. inquisitive, you're, you're curious. curious. One more word. One it's more word. Fine. One more word. It's uh, fine. Anticipatory. That, yeah, that works. It was an anticipatory. Yeah. Uh, uh. Moving All on. Right, yeah. So no yes. weekends. No, my weekend uh, was spent. Uh, I rented this. This is the most amazing series of all time. The greatest American hero. I, do you remember this? Never even, I didn't even hear of it until you started talking about it. Are you it serious? I mean, I, I, someone had uh, had sung the song to me one time, but that was it. Oh, it was, uh, it was awesome. Know, Check it out. An older I, man I, and I pulled up some websites for you just so uh, you can remember. Uh, Stephen Cannell, he's actually the writer that created the greatest. Uh, What's the greatest American, American hero? So it's about this guy. He got these. He's found this suit. He lost the manual for the suit. He's got all these superpowers. He helps an FBI agent. It's awesome. That, is it better than Meteor Man? It was. Uh, I don't. I don't remember Meteor Man. You know, see, no. see, that's. There's a gap. Here. What there's was Meteor clearly, Man? So okay, Meteor this Man, was, the guy gets hit by a out, meteor and then his mom knits him a suit. This came out this between eighty and eighty three. Okay, where, where were you at eighty? I was. Uh, I was popping out of the womb when this was getting canceled. Ah, so that's that's why. That I don't would know probably that. explain it. Yeah. But but this guy's done some amazing stuff. He did the A Team. Oh, cool. Yeah, you remember cool. that? Twenty One yeah. Jump yeah. Street. Yeah. You didn't like to, I didn't like playing with Jesse that much either. But that's how you spent your weekend watching yeah, Greatest American Hero. Greatest American Hero. It was fun. Not bad. Fun. Sounds good. Good series. I played yeah. Psychonauts and Bud Art. Mm. Yeah. Not interesting. Uh, Nokia has a new phone out. We okay. have it in the studio today. Check this out. Looks like a leather carrying case. It is a leather carrying case, but watch this. It's, for uh -oh. the, it's kind of for the ladies. Look at we Is that what you're there. unfolding it slowly? Yeah, exactly. Hold on. This one's for the ladies. There we go. Here's Here's the the phone. Back. Look at that. So it has a mirror on the outside so you can kind of like check your makeup. That's what this is right here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, but then when you open it up, you get the little ah. display there. On the back side, you have a camera. It's 4.53 by 1.26 by 0.75 inches, so it's pretty small. Pretty small. Yeah, but, it's pretty uh, small. But where's all the room for the numbers? Because last I checked, you need those to dial This something. is kind of an evening phone. You, you really <laughs> don't... No, I don't know. This is, I'm reading what the kind of comedy. line goes best with yeah. that phone, Kev? <laughs> well, <laughs> the evening phone, you, you dial with a little pad right here. You kind of have to twist mm. it like that to get the numbers. So it's not, it's not your everyday, like standard phone, but you would take this out, you know, throw it in your purse or your little compact. Sarah, are you buying this at all? It's, no. I mean... It's, it's a cool phone, Two though. separate phones. Do you dig that concept? Uh, no. A day phone no. and an evening it, I, phone? Some really froofy girls probably will, though. Yeah. It has I kind of do like the mirror. Oh, see, try, see, try, see, try and walk in place while looking manly with that real no, quick. No, no. Try it. You can't. Let's see, you, you know try. you can't. Let's see. <clears throat> Hold on. I gotta... I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm gonna take a call. No. No. It didn't, it didn't work. work. It, it didn't work. work, and I even tried to, to do the slow. Well, the, it didn't part work. of the problem Sorry. is the little freaking purse sleeve that it comes with. These yeah. can't pull off the purse sleeve, I don't think. I don't know. Interesting, though. Interesting new phone. 600 bucks. Okay. Little pricey. It's pricing for an evening phone. Yes. Yeah, our labs liked it, though. They actually gave it a really good review. Oh, good. They say it's a good phone overall. They like the girly phones. Yeah, that's right. We love the lab. Now, uh, on Friday, we talked about some Xbox photos. Mm -hmm. We talked about some rumors, some our colony stuff. Over the weekend, some other stuff came out, so right. we figured we'd just do a little quick update. Okay. Uh, this was a render. I don't even remember if we showed this on Friday. No, we this didn't. Was, the people are saying this is it here. This is the our colony kind of power so button here. So this is the next generation Xbox right here. Rumored. 
supposedly, but inside sources are saying yes, which means it's you know some nerd with a blog who's like, I know for sure. <laughs> I mean, no one knows. Um, but now here's a picture that came out. I believe this came out yesterday. Uh, this is supposedly the, one of the memory cards right, that would go is, on the front slot. This is released from our colony, right? Which is this, I believe, was from okay. our colony, which is the alternate reality game. If you're following that at all. Um, but this is a photo that I think sells it the most. It, this is the most real-looking photo that I've seen. doesn't look like a render. This looks production. No, no, no. And I think the rumors on this one was that it was leaked. So ah. it, it definitely looks, you know, it looks like the, the supposed concept. Right. The, the problem with this, then the whole Art Colony thing, is that they're leaking all these, these images and these bits and pieces. And so people that design fake-looking consoles anyway, right. they, they just go to go town. Off of. Right. Yeah. So now everybody has the similar colors yeah. and the similar design, so you never know. The second they get a little curve or something, they just fill out the rest. They're like, oh, it's got a, it's got a memory card slot now. Let me just yeah. click and drag that in there. Well, it know? looks cool. I mean, I, I don't think that's that bad of a design. Do you? No, you it's like okay. It's, it's white. Uh, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. But uh, the other interesting rumor was uh, Halo 2.5. Mm. Did you hear about this one at all? Yeah, well, I heard about the new maps, but I didn't. Is that part of it? Oh, or new maps are out today. That's for the original Halo. Okay, original like, Halo. Two free and then two like for 5.99 or something I, like that. What's 2.5 about? 2.5 supposedly will ship on. It's a rumor off of a rumor. So there's rumor that there's going to be a hard drive for for Xbox Two. That's awesome. You know, but supposedly there's going to be a game shipping on the rumored hard drive, which is uh. Halo 2.5, basically a 720p or HD version of Halo. Mm. Uh, with, See, I heard a rumor that it was support. 1080i. That was a rumor I heard. Well, I got That's a, probably a rumor off the other. Uh, you know? I had a source confirm a rumor that it was actually in 480p. Ah. Uh, in standard def. Right, which I mean, it is no. now. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Too many rumors, but yeah, you they're get all the idea. There. There's some good, juicy stuff. We'll see it come E3. And up next, this is cool. I went to Hotlanta. Hot maybe. Hotlanta. No? All right. And I played Marco Polo with the folks at Adult Swim, and I, I still haven't toweled off, actually, so. Attack of the Soul, baby. Attack. Attack of the Soul, attack. All right, last week I took a pilgrimage to Atlanta to pay tribute to my favorite block of late night programming that's not on G4. <clears throat> there in a beat up warehouse on William Street, ladies and gentlemen, I found Utopia. Here it is, my friends. We finally arrived. It's the corner of 12th and William Street. This is the birthplace of some of Primetime's most watched animated series. And there's no need for the cautionary toe dip. Nah. -uh. Let's dive head first into the world of Adult Swim. You know, when everybody at G4 found out I was going to William Street, they all said one thing. They said, Kevin, bring back lots of swag, which is a no-brainer. I got it. I'm all over it. Thanks, Astro. Appreciate it. But while I'm at it, I'm also going to grab a tour with Keith Crawford. Now, this is the guy who puts the adult in Adult Swim. I don't know what that means, but he does it. So, Keith, tell me about the, the history of William Street. Well, you're here at William Street where we uh, brought Space Ghost production many years ago when we just wanted to get away from all the corporate entity across the street at uh, Techwood. So no one can be looking over our shoulder as we make all these silly little shows. Man, you got to check this out. Oh, yeah, baby. That's a new car she's washing. You think that's a straight six? I think we're like the rebels on Hoth. Like, that's the empire over there, and they've given us this little area over here. We don't run things like they do. It's kind of like, all right, today's Monday, so that means we got to do this today. And it's kind of good that way because it's flexible and fast. Right. Amazing. Good guy. Definitely have to uh, meet with him. William Street is cool because it's just sort of an open venue. You just come in and you have an idea, and you do it, and... There's no punch clocks, there's no cameras or supervisors, and this has been my only real job. I was a fan of Adult Swim before I started working for him, so it's pretty cool to go to lunch with the Aqua Teen guys or go hang out with the C-Lab guys and do stuff. I really enjoy that, and it, it does, you have a real college dorm feel. I'm told that the no dress code thing is pretty cool. You're only dressed up for this interview now. <laughs> That's right. Dave's usually nude <laughs> walking around here. Only from the waist down. I think it first comes down to, like, we all like each other. Only from the waist down. It comes down to that more than do you have a lot of talent. I think everybody here is talented, but if we don't get along, then it's not going to work. Uh, a lot of good stuff comes out of collaboration. and That's basically what, if there's a culture at Williamson, it's collaborative. And, uh, you know, everyone's idea is as important as anyone else's. We are the sort of freaks and the outcasts. I mean, everybody here is sort of the most down-to-earth, yet 
eccentric or weird. And everybody here has a down-to-earth quality that I just don't see when I lived in New York forever when I have to go to L.A. Would they, by any chance, have any swag in their office? Uh, I think they'd probably have a lot of swag. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, if you, Keith, if you care to tell the camera what's in this room. And over here we have Andrew, who's our marketing representative, and Chris Lott, who, who uh, handles operations, scheduling the day and uh, the shows and the promos and all that good stuff. Uh, they help Michael Cahill with all the stuff he does. How's it going, man? Over here we have nice, uh, our designers, Jacob and Brandon. We get a lot of free reign. There's not a lot of people trying to mess with your stuff, which is nice. Creativity, basically, if you think of something that day, you can have it on the air nationally that night. This, is, this is interesting here. Uh, this is some of the writer's artwork here, I suppose. Neat what on six panels. That's, uh... all right, moving on. Yeah. Yeah. When you started Space Ghost, did you have uh, the grand image of William Street in your mind at all? Did you know that you wanted a separate entity that could create shows like that? No, I just wanted an office. I'm kind of worried now it's like getting popular, so don't blow it up. Don't get too big because then it starts to get ridiculous. You end up with 4,000 employees and you're like, okay, I don't know this guy anymore. It's become a you know, conglomerate as opposed to keep it lean, keep it real, just throw on the air what you want to see. And I think we'll need to... Uh call security on this guy. All right, everybody wants to know, yes, I did in fact bring back some swag, and I'm going to give it away. Nice. Well, most of it, I'm keeping the painting and I'm keeping the, the meat wad balloon. That's this a pretty, pretty sweet cool. little hoodie, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a cool hoodie. And some DVDs and some other good stuff. And I mean, it's, it's all here. So watch all week, and uh, you'll see how you can win some adult swim goods. Now, tomorrow, we'll go behind the scenes to see how the magic happens on Harvey Birdman and Sea Lab. Because there's so much, we'll have to check out Aqua Teen on Thursday. A little special Aqua Teen. Yeah. Now, still on deck, Kevin Rose has some uh, deals for you. Uh, are they of the dark variety? Yes, set? they are, indeed. Okay, good. And it's been called a post apocalyptic monster truck rally. And Boing Boing.net's Shenny Jardin was there to see it all. Our next guest is co-editor of the award-winning blog, boingboing.net. Certainly a favorite around the office. She's also a contributing writer for Wired Magazine, and you can hear her Shenny Tech segments regularly on NPR. Please welcome Shenny Jardin to the show. Welcome you back, actually. Well, thanks, thanks very much for having me back. Of course. Now, you brought a, you brought a, little, uh, a little present for me to play with today. I did. This or is... look at. We, this is a DLP is this chip. It's a digital cinema chip, and eventually this is going to replace film in movie theaters around the country. Um, How? Yeah. So How is this going to do anything like that? This is a, a device made by Texas Instruments, and the idea is if, if you were able to really, really close up on this, you'd see that inside that mirror, well, it's actually it about mirror. six mm -hmm. million different tiny mirrors, each of them about a seventh of the width of a human hair. And the way these things work, when you hit light at it, it's like having a big football stadium full of people holding up little cards. And depending on whether the mirror is aimed at the light or not, that's either going to reflect red, green, or blue, or black. Fascinating. So how, much is, uh, how much are we talking as far as money goes? Well, that is actually just a, a component in a digital cinema projector. And Which those, is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the cinema-grade projectors uh, are pricey, but uh, the idea is that eventually they'll come down and the whole process will be more affordable. Now, you've, been, you've obviously been doing a lot of research because uh, in a recent Wired article that you wrote, uh, it was about Mark Cuban taking the film out of the film industry <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, he has big plans. Um, I mean, in Hollywood, all the seven major studios have their plans underway and... Uh, you know, that's a, a big effort and it's going to take time. But there are entrepreneurs like Mark Cuban, who owns the landmark theater chain, mm -hmm. and his big 260 chain. or 270 screens, he's converting those to digital using Sony's SXRD uh, digital cinema technology. And around the world, too, in places like Brazil, Singapore, Ireland, you have different countries that have developing um, theater markets that are also making the jump to digital faster than we are here in the United States. Now, switching gears a little bit, uh, there is something called SRL, an event in Los Angeles recently. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it because it sounds <laughs> weird. It was very weird, and it's the kind of thing that uh, it, it sort of liquefies your guts. <laughs> SRL stands for Survival Research Laboratories, okay. and these guys have been around for 25 years. They make giant lethal machines, robots that do these crazy 
choreographed interactions. It's, it's not so much a robot war, but it's like that scene in Fantasia where all of the tools kind of come out and, and have lives of their own. And some of these machines uh, burst air really, really loudly and really intensely, so it's like a cannon or an explosion. Others hurl two-by-fours or cans of, uh, of sand. It's just, it's like a crazy... Well, as the guy said, a post-apocalyptic monster truck rally. But without it's the not really trucks. about robot combat. They're not designed to like smash into each other and see who fights to the death. Necessarily, it's more of just a, they don't, a choreography. Right. The, the machines don't destroy each other, but they definitely destroy props. So at the show that happened here in L.A. not too long ago, a gigantic, I don't know, it was like a 50-foot Trojan horse burned <laughs> down. And there were these uh, soldier robots that sort of crawled out of the horse's butt and fought with each other. And there's a pig head on another thing and there's jet engines spewing hot smoke and, and who's controlling crazy. them well people are <laughs> yeah i hope <laughs> like um you know there, there are human operators that use little wireless control devices oh. uh some of the machines are actually sort of driven by people but it's it's like the machines really are the focus here not the people the, the people are just their uh, audience they, they don't yeah they're like the wizard of oz and you have thing. to stand back because some of the sound is so intense that it, it makes you feel ill it makes you feel kind of high and nauseous at the same time uh, i have to ask who's going who's going to these events you went <laughs> i don't know why exactly but i mean uh, is, is, are there real enthusiasts for this sort of thing like my ears might it, it's fail a, on me today. I'm going. Right. It, it's, it's a very diverse crowd of people. The diehard fans all know to bring eye, ear, and breathing protection. Wow. But you have everything from teenagers to 20-something hipsters to, you know, I saw the, the guy who founded it, Mark Pauline, his mom was there. There were, there were people who were old enough to be my mom or dad who were present. That's great. So it's just people who love the awesome power of technology. Well, you have a really good job, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Following all these awesome people on the emerging technologies and all that good stuff. Sometimes it's just boring, but sometimes it's a lot of fun. Right, from digital cinema to, cinema to uh, very strange performance art. To lethal machines. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you for having me. Good to have you here again. We've also got links for finding a digital theater in your area, along with SRL links. I know you want to see more of that in today's show notes. You can find out all about what Jenny's up to on her website, Shenny.net. Now stay put, because I got some feed for you in just a bit. And Kevin Rose has deals so good, you may collapse in exhaustion. They're really that good. Stay tuned. Lords from Dreamcatcher Interactive will have no shortage of the hacking and slashing the most classic role-playing games feature. With all the elements that RPG fans have come to enjoy, such as story, character development, combat, magic spells, and all-around depth, Dungeon Lords presents itself as an accessible, action-filled, fully 3D package. It's loaded with quests, personal missions, extensive skills, and special abilities for customizing your character. Traveling through an enchanted land of ancient castles, dark forests, and dungeon lairs, braving an army of diabolical foes in real time, it promises over 40 hours of gameplay for the primary quest alone. Dungeon Lords can be played either single-player standalone or in multiplayer group sessions. Dungeon Lords is available for the PC. Welcome back to AOTS. I'll be looking for alien cadavers in Area 51 while Sarah interviews the more lively space folk behind the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Very nice. Now roll up your sleeves and peg your pants because it's time for some dark deals. All right, Kev, I got some good stuff right. you're going to love today. I don't, what's with you in the pants pegging, by the way? Dude, you never used to, well, you never used to do that, did <laughs> he you? He was walking around the office last week, like, look at me, and he was rolling no, his no, no, pants no. We up. Had a and, thing, we had a thing yeah. with everyone that you had to peg your pants, and then you couldn't unpeg them until someone recognized that you had your, peg, your, your pants pegged. 
All right, I, I, fair it's, enough. It was All right, a fifth I'm sorry. grade, sixth grade thing. Anyway. Anyway. Derail. Dark deals. Yes, 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 I'm ready. Yes. Are you ready? Now, I know you love your PSP. Love it to death. How about some accessories for your PSP? Huh? Love it. Take a look at this here. These are the Extreme Starter Kit for Whoa. the PSP. Yes, very extreme. Insert bending comes, guitar notes here. It's it like, wow, wow, extreme. <laughs> comes with a super fast car charger. Yeah, less than two hours. Wow. Full charge. It's got a case to carry all your PSPs. It's got like a replacement for the analog joystick. Bunch of different stuff all together. It's not 19.95 like it shows here on the screen. Oh, I have a code that you can put in. Oh, I have a code. Wow. 17.99. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> That's right. Now, <laughs> no whammy bar. Now, Mother's Day. Uh, it's yes. coming up. Uh huh. It's coming up. Only a few days. Well, how many days left? Hold on. I did Google search on it. 13 Wait. days left. 13 days. That's pretend right. you love her. 1-800-Flowers.com, 15% off flowers. I just had to throw that in there. You've got to get these for Mom. I have the code for that as well. Like, Moving on. Hey, Mom, I found a clearance for you. That's right. <laughs> you don't have to tell your mom you I'll got 15% off. Well, she's going to know now. Well, yeah, she probably will. But <laughs> anyway. Moving on. Jinx, 10% off. All Jinx stuff, like we've showed you before. But they're also still doing that PSP giveaway just for people to watch Attack of the Show. Yes. You have to use the coupon code DARKDEALSPSP to get into that contest and to give away one every, every time we do it. Good so deal. That's pretty cool. And then the last thing real quick, something I've kind of fallen in love with, the Seagate 5 gigabyte. Mm. Uh, this is a little nice little device right here. That's a 5 gigabyte storage drive, and this is how big it is. I'm actually holding one right now. It's like the uh, iMac at, mouse, the hockey puck mouse. It does look like the hockey puck mouse, but that's it right there. Look at that. It's a nice little drive. It's super thin, and then all you do is take a look at this. Watch this. Boom. Pull this out. And then the USB just slides out just like that. You Sweet. plug it in, and you have a nice little 5 gigabyte drive. It's and great. It, it's USB 2.0, right? Yeah, USB so 2.0. Nice and speedy. It's actually a little tiny hard drive inside there. A little 3600 RPM. I didn't even know they made them at that, that speed. But uh, 100 bucks. 100 bucks, 5 gigs. Take it with you. Throw it in your back pocket. It's good to go. Sweet to get, deal, man. To get all these links and codes, you can just visit our show notes. We have all of them there. Very nice. Good stuff. Yeah, good, good stuff. stuff. Good luck with the pants pegging. Oh, thank you. Yes. Good. And uh, oh, wait, look alive, because oh. uh, it's the feed. Oh. Mac users who pre-ordered Tiger OS from the local PC mall got a little surprise this weekend. And it wasn't a stuffed tiger mascot or a t-shirt or a Steve Jobs bobblehead. No, they got Tiger OS eight days early. It seems some vendors got their shipment a little before the intended street date and decided, what the hell, let's just start moving them out the door. It's not like Apple's touchy about that or anything. So Apple, being touchy about that and everything, quickly demanded that all customers return their early copies or they will be refused support. So the unopened, uncopied OS disks were dutifully returned on the backs of flying pigs and unicorns. <laughs> Now, the MPAA needed some extra muscle in the fight against DVD pirates, and they weren't above resorting to bribery to get the job done. Luckily, the NYPD have gotten involved. Not to stop this practice, mind you, but to get their greasy mitts on some Kiznash. Yeah, I just said Kiznash. Two NYPD officers are under investigation for allegedly accepting hundreds of dollars in gratuities from the MPAA for busting street vendors who were selling illegal DVDs. MPAA anti-piracy official Bill Shannon strongly denies the charges, saying, quote, We work with law enforcement organizations by providing information and logistical support, and the police make the arrests, unquote. He then added, Hey, anybody drop this wad of hundreds? Anybody? DVD piracy is also at the forefront of a recent court case regarding copy protection. The Paris Court of Appeals has ruled that DVDs should not be copy protected, as this practice is incompatible with private copying rights. This, of course, is wonderful news for French DVD pirates. Actually, the case was brought to court by a man who he merely wanted to dub his DVD copy of David Lynch's Mulholland Drive to VHS so that he could watch it at his mother's house. Now, we're going to put aside the creepy mental image of the guy and his mom watching a steamy lesbian action scene together. Kind of gross. But the case brought to light the extreme lengths DVD manufacturers go to avoid copying, even if it's perfectly legal. Vive la France! And finally, after tooling around with it for a couple of years, Microsoft is finally ready to break out the 64 version of Windows. 64 bit. Woo! 64 bit! I said get excited, Woo! people. That's 32 more bits than 32 bit. Woo! Really excited about that. Although the new version won't be on retail shelves, Windows users who already own a 64 bit capable machine will now have the option of trading in their old 32 bit Windows for an upgrade. Why would they want to? Um. I think this speaks for itself.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No lag time on that mother. Want to see it again? Roll that again. It's really good. God, I love it. God, I love that 64-bit. That's it for this Madcap edition of The Feed. <laughs> Well done with the, the yes. solitaire shuffling, but I mean, it's, that's very true. There's some truth to it. There's, yeah. uh, you were saying earlier, there's really no point in upgrading right now, is there? No, I don't, I don't think there is. I mean, why? There's no apps that are out there yet. It's going to be like you have to download new 64-bit drivers. It's going to be uh, just kind of nasty at first, but they had to do it at some point. You right. know what I mean, they had to go 64-bit, now they are, and that's a good thing, but it's not really meant for the mainstream. I wouldn't... Uh, Do you think there's a reason they did now? Is it just to say, okay, now it's out there, maybe someone will finally develop for it, or did well, they just throw it out there because they needed something? No, I think you're absolutely right. On? No, they have to get it out there so the developers can start developing 64-bit apps, and Longhorn's going to be have a 64-bit version. I don't know if they're going to go true 60, all, all the way 64-bit, but we'll see. I don't know. Right now, you can open up the control panel like twice as fast. Woo! And that's about it. <laughs> so, the start bar has never yeah. been faster, baby. That's right. All right, next up, uh, Sarah's going to put on her mining helmet to search for those rare gems of the Internet. And Zach Wood will give us a guided tour of Area 51. Watch for probes! The Feed is brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Navy, accelerate your life. DVD Fire up your gaming PCs. We're playing Call of Duty United Offensive in this week's Attack of the Show, Land Party. Take your first-person squad-based shooting old school. And by old, we mean mid-20th century. And by school, we mean the theater of a horrific global war that changed humanity forever. Yeah! To register, go to our website and click on Join Our Land Party. You'll get all the details and the links to get started. And we'll see you Thursday for the old Land Party. It's going to be good times. Now... Although our next guest is here to talk about aliens and mutant viruses and government conspiracies, we have signed documents proving that he's actually not insane. Please welcome Midway Game producer Zach Wood. Zach, how you doing? Thank you for coming on the show, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, you're, you're perfectly sane. P pretty much. Okay, that's that's good enough for this show. We'll take that. Uh, now let's talk about uh, the old Area 51. Because now, when someone said they're, they're making a new Area 51, I immediately imagine light gun game. Yeah, I have to reload. Game. I'm pointing off the screen. Right, right. Uh, is this is this true? It's not. No. Okay. No, it's not. No, we basically just want to take the, the world of Area 51 and really create something more in-depth that we can kind of play off some of the mysteries and conspiracy theories. It's really kind of a, a unique environment to create a game in, so... Was there, was there a plot to the arcade shooter? Or, I mean, have you just created you know, one based on it? Because I don't remember one, personally, but... Yeah, really, just there are <laughs> aliens there, you're shooting them, get out alive type of thing, but, yeah. Sounds good enough. Yeah. So, so what's the basic story behind uh, your Area 51? Right, so in our game, you play a uh, hazmat specialist for the U.S. Army. His name's Ethan Cole. And you're sent into Area 51 because there's been some sort of a biochemical breach. So you're sent in with a team of three to investigate what's going on. And in true Hollywood form, of course, things aren't what they seem. And you start uncovering mysteries, and it just sort of goes from there. And uh, you also have some, uh, some pretty big talent in here. I remember I saw, uh, heard David Duchovny in there. What, what stars did you have working on the game? Right, David Duchovny's in it. He plays the main character, Ethan Cole. We have Powers Booth, who you might know from uh, Deadwood. Yes. Uh, and Marilyn Manson plays a really unique alien in our game. Now, now, tell me about Marilyn, because I heard he came in and actually forced you to sort of change one of the characters. I mean, or he caused yeah. you to, at least. Well, he just sort of, you know, we sort of rethought the way this character was. Or initially, he was sort of like a sad sack. He used to be a gray alien. He's been uh, performed on and experimented upon. And when, when we were able to get Manson as a voice, we sort of made him more of a creepy character. Not a stretch with the casting, by not the way. At all, not I mean, at it's, all. it's not the first time I've heard Manson and creepy in the same sentence, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. Now, uh, now, what's the deal with this virus that's, that's, that's transforming our character and everybody else down there? Yeah, so you find out that there's a virus that was um, let out by this doctor, Dr. Cray, who was uh, the, the one who uh, sort of helped create this virus there as a weapon for the government. And it starts m mutating everybody at the base, and eventually it gets its way to you, and you sort of uh, become an alien. But you can use some of the alien powers to your advantage with the help of this Dr. Cray. Oh, okay, so it doesn't completely destroy your right, character. Right, right. Now, now, what's the typical gameplay experience like? Because there's a lot of console shooters out there. Yeah. So what is, what is fundamentally different or fundamentally the same? What can we expect with Area 51? Well, I mean, we didn't really want to reinvent the wheel in terms of, like, the way that it that feels, the analog sticks, mm -hmm. the, uh, the sticky targeting. Um, so the mechanics of the game is very familiar to you if you're a first-person shooter sure. fan. 
but we sort of spent our time creating uh, the unique aliens, uh, the unique weapons. We have some really cool, like, um, uh, alien sort of bred hybrid weapons and alien abilities. So you actually get these, these alien powers, which really kind of make it different. Very nice. And I must say, even, like, even on the PS2 version that I was playing, the effects look gorgeous. Great Thanks. effects when you're being attacked or just you're, you're in the fight and the camera's shaking. Man. Really dug that. Uh, but I want to touch briefly on that, because there's different versions. There's the Xbox, the PS2, and right. there'll be a PC as well. Absolutely. Um, the ratings were coming out. Good ratings across the board, but yeah. IGN said the PS2 version's an 8.5, the Xbox is an 8.0. Right. And their reasoning was that they, they even put a disclaimer saying it's not because it's a, it's a better game on the PS2, it's just because we compare it against other first-person shooter games on the Xbox. Right. And I was wondering, you know, as a developer, how do you feel about something like that? I don't know. I think it's kind of unfortunate, because personally, I think that uh, games should be re reviewed more like films, in that they're they're all reviewed in and of themselves on their own merits. Right. Whereas in the game industry, because you're a first-person shooter, you're compared to every other first-person shooter. If you're a horror game, you're compared to all the different horror games. And it's a little unfortunate. But, um, you know, people will say what they want and have their opinions. You know, something we just have to live with in the game industry, I think. I mean, is that a challenge as a developer when you, when you say, okay, we're going to do a first-person shooter? Do you immediately have to look at it and go, okay, well, how can we do a Halo, or how can we best a Halo? Or do, yeah. you, do you look at it and say, okay, well, we want to do our own thing, forget what everybody else is doing? Well, I hope not, because if that's, if that's your goal, I think you're starting off on the wrong foot. You, right. know, you really just need to kind of create the game that's going to best tell your story, the, the kind of game you want to make. And for, for Area 51, it was about immersing the player in the world and really sort of letting the experience happen around you. And you know, we wouldn't set out to make a Halo killer. We set out to make a really good first-person shooter, right. and it just so happens that you know, there are other popular games in the genre. Well, i got to say, what time I spent with it was incredibly enjoyable. It's Thanks a, a lot. Very great game, and uh, thank, thank you for stopping much. by, Zach. We thank appreciate you. it. You got it. All right, look, for Area 51, as I said, on the PS2 and Xbox tomorrow, and for the PC on May 23rd, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Now, um, I'm sorry, did someone, say, did someone say Gems of the Internet? <laughs> You know, Kevin, a lot of people around the office give me ideas for gems of the internet, and they're usually pretty awful, because, uh -huh. you know, my standards are really high. Yeah. But I thought today, you know, let's, let's give it back. Give it back to all my office mates, who I love so very much. So this is all from in, inside this G4? This is all from our team, and it also okay. kind of takes the responsibility off of me. Nice. Because, you know... Not it's my their fault. Not my yeah. problem. Anyway, so the first one, if you heard of the oxygen bars, oxygen yes. bars, pretty popular, mm -hmm. pretty trendy. Well, well, what if you didn't even have to go to an oxygen bar because sitting on your ass at home, you're on a oxygen couch made of grass. Ah. What do you think? Sprout a couch, huh? I see. So the grass, a couch. The grass puts off the oxygen. You sit grass there, relax. Grass puts off the oxygen. You feel very outdoorsy, yet very comfortable and perhaps going to recline. Now, if you say, how in the world would somebody put together something like this? Yes. It has some instructions, starting with some, uh, you know, what are those things? Wood stakes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a really big gardener. And uh, then you, you know, put some grass around and put some armchairs, and I just love this. I want one of these in my nice. own living room. Super fun. Okay, the next one, uh, were you a Mad Magazine reader as a child? Not really, no. Not really, but you know, you've, you've flipped through them. You know mm -hmm. that there's lots of funny animations and yeah. funny little sayings that happen. Well, there is now a website dedicated, dedicated to Don Martin, who was a famous, late uh, cartoonist for mm -hmm. Mad Magazine. Now, he had a lot of little, uh, little e exclamations and such that would happen in his, in his, uh, in his cartoons, and now we have a dictionary. For example, oh. ack could be Indians getting shot or man choking, depending on the context. Nice. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you liking this? Yeah, it's good. So you go down a little bit farther, and, uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, ock, man having a heart attack. <laughs> ock, gack, arc, gasp, patient choking. Very important the distinctions here. It's like a reference guide for all the hardcore mad <laughs> it's fans It's a reference out there. guide. Yeah. I was looking at this, I'm like, what the hell? But anyway, so there you go. And finally... Some babies are cuter than others. Can we just, can we just put that out there? That's true. Some, there are cute babies and there are not so cute babies, but no baby is cuter than one with a beard. <laughs> That's right. Babies with beards, oh. my friend. <laughs> babies with beards. Kevin's now, getting excited in the background. I can hear him. I think this might have been Kevin Pereira's now, idea. Is this I just like, have a hunch. Is this a, real, is this a real deal? Like just like some freak babies with beards? Or is this kind of Photoshop action? They are not freaks. They are loving children with a lot of me, very can interesting you, can facial hair. Can you zoom in hair. on one of these people? You can't, um, unfortunately. But they have, they have some really, they have good advice for parents. You know, parents going, my God, my baby has a beard. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So your baby has a beard. Don't worry. You are not alone. That's pretty cool. And it cool. goes on to, you know, talk about it, it, the kind of dog doctors that can, uh, that can prescribe the best uh, medicine for bearded babies and That's right. that sort of thing.
I don't know if they actually do that or not, but I'm going to guess. You can find all my gem links plus all the gems of yesteryear at g4tv.com slash the Sarah Lane Files. Great place to go. Super fun. Now coming up, like it or not, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is coming to a theater near you. Will it live up to its legacy, though? Find out. Door. Run into the wall! <laughs> He's going to run into the wall full speed in an expensive trash can. Let's see what happens. Ready, set, go! <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's show is kid-tested, mother-approved. Concept artist Stefan Martin Yeri will be here to show us some of the work he did on a little something called Star Wars Episode 3. You might have heard of it. Plus, film threats Chris Gore is back with his magical bag of DVDs. We have no idea what's coming out of there, so be prepared. And we make a return trip to William Street and get behind the scenes of Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, and C-Lab 2021. Thanks, Kevin. Now, the people over at the Whipset saw what you've been driving and, after they stopped laughing, have decided to help. From May 8th through the 21st, the Whipset sweepstakes kicks off. Watch Street Fury and Formula D every night between the 8th and the 21st and keep an eye out for sweepstake clues. There'll be four new clues every night. When you find them, enter them at g4tv.com slash Whipset sweepstakes and you could win the grand prize at $20,000 car makeover. Daily prizes include slim PS2s, game glass LCDs, and much more. The more you enter, the better your chances of winning. So check it out. And now, naturally, the wildly anticipated adaptation of the Douglas Adams classic, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, hasn't gone off without at least some controversy. I had a chance to speak with the filmmakers and the stars to find out how on earth they plan to live up to these impossible expectations. Attention, people of Earth. I regret to inform you that in order to make way for the new hyperspace express route, your planet has been scheduled for demolition. Have a nice day. It's one of the world's most beloved sci-fi stories. So why ruin a good thing by making the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy into a feature film? Well, because a movie screenplay was exactly what late creator Douglas Adams had been working on for 20 years. Why do you think he wanted to make this movie so badly? Hitchhikers was always, I think, in Douglas's mind, was an evolving phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Started as a radio, very quickly became a book, became TV, became a computer game. And I think Douglas, intellectually, he enjoyed the challenge of moving Hitchhikers and its characters and its stories into each new medium. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted it to be, finally, a big movie. Yeah. We're gonna die. No. No. What's this? What's that? What's this? What's this? This is nothing. Yeah, we're gonna die. As an actor, I'm sure it feels good to know that Douglas Adams not only wanted to make this movie, but was working on it. Exactly. And some of the new things that you see in the film are Douglas's. You know, I think that's the thing people may not understand that as Douglas is now no longer with us, that we've somehow added other things that weren't him. Right. But the, the new things that aren't in the book, that are in the film, are probably Douglas's. Hama Kabula is, of course, best remembered for his slanderous Don't Vote for Stupid campaign. So what is the actual story here? Whew, okay, real fast. Earth gets 86 an ordinary man is saved, he learns there's really a whole other universe out there, and reads up on it with a portable electronic reference guide called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Vogons. Vogons, bad-tempered, bureaucratic, officious, and callous. They wouldn't even lift a finger to save their own grandmothers from the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. Without orders, signed in triplicate, sent in, sent back, queried, lost, found, subjected to public inquiry, lost again, and finally buried in soft peat for three months and recycled as fire lighters. The guide's capabilities are not unlike what today's real-world PDAs offer. So it's pretty amazing that this idea was first printed back in the 1960s. 70s. Actually, Douglas Adams was a like loved technology, loved computers, loved Macs. Actually, mm -hmm. That's what and I heard. Uh, was a huge fanatic about that kind of thing. So I'm sure it was wishful thinking at the time. You know, yeah. I wish there was something like this. While we modern audiences can connect with concepts like digital info, the movie making process itself 
old school. With all of the, you know, green screen possibilities, yes. you can do anything you want to do in a movie yeah, now, yeah. but that a lot of this stuff was actually props that were built. Yeah, it was really, I mean, it's a comedy, and it had to work on set. Um, uh, so the Vogons are real. They're huge, great creatures that right. we made with Jim Henson's Creature Shop. It can jump in between those lines really, really quickly. All right. The whole of Hitchhikers is really a surreal spin on life, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the Vogons really aren't that dissimilar to people you might find at the DMV or, <laughs> you know, somebody that's really irritating you in a bank. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This prisoner is being detained for kidnapping the president. Oh, no, she's not eligible for release at this time. I think it's kind of like a new movement in camera effects to come back because people are getting sick of CGI. Exactly. And you can be fantastic and organic at the same time. Yeah, he shares three of the same mothers as me. <gasps> It's an adventure movie and a sci-fi movie, but it's also clever and it has mm -hmm. these philosophical, like, sort of undertones. That's, I think, what, what has made it so timeless is that it, 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 it's got all these elements right. going. And what's cool is that it, I think this is going to attract new fans. Oh! Oh! Ah! Nerd, what? What was that? Oh! All right, so everybody's given their two cents. Everybody's furiously and sometimes angrily blogging about the movie. It's true. Your uh, before I saw it, I had heard it's awful. Right. Now, I have read the book. I've read the book more than once. Okay. And I loved it. Really? I thought it was really good. I didn't think it stayed 100% true to the book, but what movie does? Yeah, movies never what do. What movie so. does? And a, as, you, as you heard in some of the interviews that I had, the filmmakers, uh, Robbie Stamp, the executive producer, who was a very good friend of Douglas Adams, said he wanted this to evolve. You know? Gotcha. These ideas were his. Unfortunately, he didn't see them realized with us. But, you know, yeah. it makes me feel better. He's basically saying, simmer down, fanboys, and simmer just down, watch the damn boys. movie, eat some popcorn. It's funny. It's funny. Okay. It definitely was, isn't for everybody, though, but neither was the book. Oh, I'm still so. waiting to see it. Very cool. It's very good. Very good book and movie. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy opens in theaters everywhere this Friday, and you can find out a lot more about the film at hitchhikersmovie.com. All right, now stick around or you'll miss the emails in the IRC chat room. And you wouldn't want to do that. No, look, we're just, we're just looking out for you. Totally. Or the Xbox. All right, don't miss tomorrow's show. Uh, we're going to show you how to make a homemade portable Nintendo entertainment system. We call it the Nintendo Station Portable, and it's going to be super fly. <laughs> super duper fly, Kevin. That's right. Now, before we get started, I have to tell everyone, I, want, I need some help from the fans out there. I found my anime character. Uh, a, a fan sent it in, but there it is. There he is right there. Looks just like me. Who is this? And, and what, what little movies does he appear in? I want to find out. Ah. Doesn't that look like me a little bit? A little bit. There's a nice fan that sent that Like, I found my anime character. I'm like, did you, like, go on a journey this no, weekend like, and find know, your inner You know how they always say like, there's, like, an anime character that looks like you out sure. there somewhere? Sure. Well, that was mine. Very nice. Yeah. Well, hopefully someone can help you out with that. Yes, thank you. Google search it or something. Thank you. All right, let's see what's going on in the old IRC chat room. Miss Lane? Okay, first question from BadMoFu310. BadMoFu. All right, looked like foo. Is Jimmy the Geek going to predict who will win in the NBA playoffs? Hmm. Mm. That's, a good, That's a good question. I don't know. Well, well, it's up to Jimmy's discretion, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's a busy guy. We should get him on. But I think yes. Yes, I Let's think the answer is yes. Let's just say he will and All right. make him. Jimmy's coming on, and he'll give you those predictions. Done. Done. <laughs> That's it for today. Uh, time flew. I'm sorry, but it's because we were having fun. Thanks to our guests, Zach Wood and Shani Jardin. They've only got seven more hours to kill until bedtime. Use them wisely. Get your hands off your joystick and jump with the G-Spot. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Two hours of cold popping, judgment slamming, no holds barred game of feeling. Only one of us will survive this review. Yeah. From video heroes to total zeros. <laughs> Keep it in your pants. We're feeding your obsession seven days a week. And I know you like parties. Yes. Find the G-Spot tonight starting at 10 Eastern.